Good day everyone. We are back with the third interview of Translation Talks. We have with here Dr. Manu Sani. She has been teaching German since 1984. She is a professor at the Center of German Studies in Jawaharlal Nehru University. So let us begin our interview. So Dr. Sani, thank you so much for being a part of Translation Talks. To be very honest, I'm not really a literary translator. I wish I were. Uh, it's got to do more with the fact that um, when I started teaching, I did translate a few texts of Clara Setkin, but that was over one summer vacation. I still wasn't teaching so many hours, and it also made me understand how difficult translation as a job is. Hmm. So then for many years, I have actually not really done too many translated I tra translations. I did one smallish text of uh, kind of Bills into English and one text of Christian Chandra's into German. The, second, the last one has not been published, the other stuff is all published. Uh, actually, uh, literary translation in that sense for me is really important because if you even think of how the School of Languages was set up, it was meant to be a kind of a, 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 a way, a media, a medium to introduce India to different cultures from different countries, and translation, of course, is one of the most important parts of that. So when our literary um, translation um, MA started, it seemed like a good idea when this Wuppertal project came up to ask students who are interested in literary translation to translate texts into Hindi. So I would actually say that that is really where I um, have done some work that sort of facilitating this translation of women's texts which actually are not well known in India at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean recently because of in the last decade Yelenek and uh, Hayata Muller got Nobel Prizes so suddenly they have been translated. But actually the iconical or the really important women, trans women writers from German speaking countries have never been translated into Hindi or actually most Indian languages. What does get translated are still the so-called male canon, you know, whether it was Brecht or Heinrich Böhm, they all seem to be very fond of. And uh, Max Frisch, there was a Sahitya Academy uh, series also, which you people probably know about it. And there again, you can see it's, they were modern writers, they were post-war writers, but they were all men. You know, even if it's Günter Eich or something, it was all male writers were translated. And of course, we've got people like uh, Vishnu Kare, who has done another translation of Faust, so we do now have two or three translations of Faust into Hindi. But nothing really substantial in terms of women mm -hmm. writers. I mean, Yerenek and Atta Miller, yeah, to a certain extent. And particularly in Hindi literature, doesn't really happen. In Marathi literature, there seems to be a certain amount of translation. But in Hindi, it hasn't really happened. So I think this Wuppertal project has been a really wonderful start. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, the book is now appearing very, very shortly. It will appear. We are doing the last bit of the editing work. Mostly, it is, you know, okay. One, in the, they made some typing errors and things like that. So, this is a series of uh, literary texts uh, by women writers from the German-speaking world mm -hmm. uh, from 1945 to 2014. Okay. So, starting with people like Elizabeth Lengeza, so writing immediately after the end of the war. Is a Eichinger, very important for us, all the way down to Eva Menasse, who's the newest writer, 2014. Yeah. So we've got a huge, I mean, it's, it's really varied because we've got Uzdama in it, we've got Mai Ayun, so you've got Black African, uh, Black German literature, you've got mm, Turkish German literature, you've got Hatta with it. So it's just, so it, well, that's mm -hmm. been our big uh, okay. focus. Broad focus. Okay. as I just mentioned, you know, if you say I want to translate Hatta Müller and Henry the Yelenek, you might find translators simply because they won the Nobel Prize. But if I wanted to say that I find Marlene Haushofer would find a resonance here, well, who's going to publish it? You have to first find it published, right? And for me, actually, if I think of my experience over this last two years, last three years rather, the biggest issue beyond helping students get the translation done and uh, was to actually find, uh, get hold of the copyright. Okay. Getting copyright, 
getting the rights to translation is a huge, huge issue. Writing to people, getting hold of, and also because it is expensive, you know, the the exchange isn't exactly very favorable to us. So although many publishers were kind enough not to ask us because when they heard that it was a student project, some obviously insisted, and they have the right to insist on it. But they were also kind enough to say, okay, we'll take the minimum, which was 50 euros. Okay. When you think in, 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 a, in, a, in an anthology, mm. and there are over 15 writers, a 50 euro each time also becomes a lot. You know? mm. And of course, this, part, this, this whole translation I have to add was only done, and was, it was facilitated through the DAD. You know, that there is this, tra uh, this, this exchange between India and uh, between JNU and uh, Bhopatal and with Ursula Kocher. So that facilitated so that students from here could go to Germany, interact with German students, German students came here. So they uh, stayed together for six months in order to understand the texts. And it was also a big motivational thing for them, the fact that they were in Germany for three months, yes. you know. So I think that also helped the project uh, fructify, come to an end. But as I said, when you think about wanting to publish, really if they knew who was willing to publish it. Because I did go to one or two other publishers before some part agreed to take it. And their thing was, well, short stories is not really exciting because so many short stories are short texts because we want poems and essays as well in our anthology. But, uh, you know, plenty of Hindi, speaking, Hindi writers are writing really exciting things. Why would we want translation? Okay. So that was also an issue. So they said if you have a novel, now translating a novel you have to reach a level of competency, which was not yet possible because these are budding translators, yes. you know. And out of the 12 translators Indian from, you know, from JNU, I would say there were at least four mm -hmm. who were absolutely excellent translators. Absolutely okay. excellent. Four of them. One, two, three, yeah, four were absolutely outstanding who will actually become very good translators. Okay, so you, it wouldn't be wrong to say that JNU is sort of training the next generation of I hope so. But provided they are paid for it, no? Of course. But that's the other big issue, you know, mm -hmm. which is an issue even in Europe, because I have a friend who is a translator, professional mm -hmm. translator, and who would like to ideally always do literary translations, but that pays very badly. Mm -hmm. So she works with, uh, you know, side trip magazines, translates for them, Okay. so that she can earn her bread and butter. So I think uh, for translators, this is also a huge problem. No? How am I going to be able to earn money from this? Because it's, it's a labor of love. It's not really, you're not doing this for any other reason. Yeah. I think so. That's, what I mean. That's why I just gave you an example of a friend of mine in Europe. I mean, mm -hmm. she's German. And she doesn't get paid for literary translation. She's earning okay, but that's okay. because she does other translations. Okay. And budding translators, yes, it is an encouragement if they are paid properly. Mm -hmm. And if they also get, you know, like this trip to Germany, because it helps to read German literature in Germany and be able to attend classes and understand how it is. I mean, you know, like the workshop atmosphere about interacting with German literature. Because you can't forget that many of these people who are translators, I mean, as I said, there were four who I found really good. And um, I'm not necessarily saying they were the best readers. Mm -hmm. The best readers were the literature students. Mm -hmm. But these were translation students. Okay. The four that I'm thinking of, only one is a literature student out of the four. Okay. Three were translation students. Mm -hmm. So initially they were not good readers. They became good readers over the course of it. But they were good translators. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. Whereas the, li the literature students who are part of this the project, they read very well. Of course, they have issues in finding strategies of translation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, in that case, an exchange of thoughts helps. Help, absolutely. You know, a colloquium or yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Colloquium workshops are very nice. So, you continue doing them throughout. Mm -hmm. Throughout the year, I think. Throughout the year. Before they went to Germany, in okay. Germany, of course, when they came back and when the Germans came. Mm -hmm. So, we had continuous exchange. It was actually, it became almost like another course. And uh, in Bhopata, they had German partners. Yes, yes. six yeah. Germans and six Indians to work together. Okay. I think the most important thing for anybody who wants to be a literary translator is to read a tremendous amount of literature. Because I think that's the problem that I found.
account happening over and over again when you cannot understand literary language. And of course, you need to do it in both the I mean, this is something that is so obvious that I'm just stating the obvious. Mm -hmm. But some of this, one forgets this all the time. Yeah? That if I have not read Sakshin Hindi literature, I don't have the idiom to translate it into. If I haven't read Sakshin German literature, I don't know the references. And I mean, the biggest references are the biblical and the Greek mythology. So if you are not aware of that culture, you have to basically work through that. I would say that is the most important thing. And the second is not to actually get disillusioned by the fact that you're not going to earn very much. Mm -hmm. I think a passion for literature is what makes you a good literary translator. And just reading, reading, reading in the language. And also, of course, learning about translation strategies. I think that helps. Mm -hmm. Also, the debate, we have a tremendous amount of debate on which language are we going to translate into? Because someone who do it in absolutely, you know, very high Hindi, which was not high German being translated into high Hindi, it was literary German being translated into a Sanskritized Hindi, which was not the way it was written. So finally being translated into Hindustan, you know. But that is also an issue that we have to do. Okay. So background reading, knowing about Germany, knowing about India, Reading, reading, reading. I think that's really the only way you can be a good translator. I think. I think that's really for me the most important. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sahani, for doing this interview with us. Yes, right. So, according to Dr. Sahani, passion fuels the fire. So, if you are passionate about literature, you will turn out to be a good translator if you want to, if you actually put in the hard work for it. So, thank you so much for uh, listening to this interview. And if you are an aspiring literary translator or a well-established literary translator, please log on to our website, translatingmindsjourney.com and register yourself. Thank you so much.